All right, guys. I was in here. Adjust my camera here. I was in here working, and uh, I was doing some biased cuts, and I was doing them down here on the <coughs> mod I did on the um, Harbor Freight bandsaw, um, based on the Adam Savage uh, um, mod that he did with his DeWalt one. And I need to do a bias cut. Where's that cut off? Maybe I toss it out. Well, okay, I need to do a 45 degree cut, right, on some um, half inch tubing for a project I'm working on. And uh, I was trying to figure out how to do it. I tried doing it on my miter saw and I was able to get the cut, but it essentially half melted it too, because um, it's just too fast. And uh, I should probably not rest my arm on that in case it accidentally turns on. Um, but it was um, just too fast. And, and so I, I cut it on here and then I was like messing around with how I'm gonna do it. So I took this piece off of my Harbor Freight uh, table saw. And I don't really use this guy very much on that at all. And I just kind of pinned it here and I pushed it across and it worked really well and it got me thinking. Um, I What I wanna do, well, got me thinking, is there a way I can make a a permanent way to put this on here. And at first I was thinking like, ah, I'd have to cut a hole in the, the aluminum and then this aluminum's not thick enough. And then I'm like, what if I just put it on the side here? And uh, cause it's pretty square. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is, you know, this is a low tolerance tool. I mean, it's fucking Arbor Freight. Um, so I want this to slide here and then I, I just measured this. I'm like, is that gonna be exactly three quarters of an inch? And it was. Um, so I have this, uh, my, all the way out here. Um, I have this, I have these chunks of um, MDF that are three quarters of an inch, and I think we're gonna put one guy right here, just uh, glue it on there, um, probably just use the nail gun, pop it right on there, and then I'll put another piece of wood coming up here, another piece of ply coming up here, and then that'll make a nice channel for this guy to move in, and uh, looks at, I make it, Make it a little tight up here because it's moving against this piece of aluminum. And I, I didn't get a very super straight cut on this aluminum, unfortunately. I wasn't expecting to have to use that corner. But it's a little bit off and it's sticking out a little bit over here. So I may have to grab my angle grinder and just take down this, this little piece right here in order to get it on before, before I do the gluing. But uh, I think I'm going to work up this guy first. And, um, and see how we're looking, and I'm hoping, it, it's late, it's like 10.30. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to just bust this out in like an hour at most, and then this will be like so much more useful, because then I'll be able to do bias cuts, which is the one thing I was, I didn't want to build this saw table for, because it didn't allow me to do biased angled cuts, and it still won't allow me to bias this way. It won't be do, let me do a double bias, but uh, <laughs> unless I come up with a clever way to do that, but um, I doubt it. But. Um, now I can I could do precise angles, and that would make this thing like the most useful tool in the world, and it only costs like seventy dollars in a little bit of my time. Uh, let's see what we can do, guys.
Okay, I realized doing that um, was squaring the this thing to the wood and not to this guy, which I don't know. I could check this. I'll check the squareness. I'll check the squareness. I'll check the squareness. All right. Let's see here. The important. That's actually. Uh, no, I took it off. Ugh, I did take it off. Fuck. Um. Hmm. See, I want this to travel square. And actually, it kind of does appear that this is angled. I wonder. See, the blade is kind of angled. The blade is, looks like it's really angled. Jesus. So, I guess it's not that big of an issue. So, it may not be an exact perfect, uh, like... Angle, let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so I had to take this, I had to take this side down with the angle grinder to make this fit. Um, and if I like pinch this to the blade, you can see that this is like a lot bigger of a gap here than down here. So maybe this was not square anyway. Um, I mean, I, I took it maybe more the direction it was going anyway. It looks like it's pretty out of square anyway. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, this will kind of twist a little bit as it gets pushed through. Um, you know, if, if the angle isn't, doesn't match up to be perfect, it's not the end of the world. Obviously, we'd like it to travel with it, but this has just got to get me close. And if there's an error, I could figure out what it is. If it's like what, a, like a degree or two, and I can account for it as I do this. So it doesn't have to be perfect, is what I'm saying. Okay, I'd say, it's hard to tell. Let's say we're off by like a degree or two here. But that's pretty close. I mean, it's, it's pretty close. And I would say it looks like I need to make it more obtruse by about a degree or two. And that's pretty good. Yes, I did air nail gun my finger and yes it hurts um i think i need one of adam savage's demerit badges um he's always talking about how these these air guns nailers they want blood and uh it's not that i didn't believe him i did um it's just you know i was in got all that glue um couldn't get it out now it won't stop coming out um 
it's just I was in a hurry and I forgot. And uh, I probably won't forget again because that really fucking hurt. Um, cool. It's fucking glue everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. Um, this thing works. That was a really, really quick and dirty and bloody um, one day thing. Fits, fit up not bad though. Maybe I'll even extend the table out to kind of support the back end of this at some point, but um, I have a feeling that's going to be a really useful upgrade to this thing. Uh, even if it took a little bit of blood to get it. I think it went up and kind of underneath my nail. Um, oh, can I see the slice all the way through there? That's yeah, kind of gnarly. I won't bore you guys with that, but I will not be doing that again, hopefully. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. I love you. What's up guys? Um, just got home, got locked out of my house by my sister, but I'm, got to, I'm, in, I'm inside now, it's all right. Um, and today I just had on my mind, I'm sure you guys watch The Mandalorian. Um, I'm positive, I'm positive you guys watch that show. Uh, I mean, maybe not every one of you who follows, follows this, but um, a lot of you, I'm sure. And uh, I've just had on my mind, like, could you make Mandalorian armor? I mean, it'd be way easier than making uh, Iron Man armor. Like, I'm sure way easier. Like, way easier. Um, and, like, you know, I don't know if you follow Alex Steele on, um, on uh, YouTube. Um, he's done some forgings out of uh, titanium. And then uh, if you watch, like, people like, uh, like Man, at, Man at Arms, Man... Forged at Arms, something like that. There's a there's a channel like that out there. Um, this is a TV show too for a while, I think. Um, they've uh, you know made like helmets and stuff, and you know obviously you can make old armor you know via forging. You just would have to learn how to do it. Um, could you forge uh, some like Mandalorian armor out of titanium? Um, and then uh, you know I, I would think like half inch titanium would probably be the thickness you'd want to go. And that would probably, you know, I'd want to test it. I'd, I'd want to make a curved piece of titanium and shoot it with like 5.56 five, um, in like, uh, what's the round they fire out of the, uh, the AR-50 or the AK-47? 6.62, 6.72, one, one of those numbers. <laughs> um, uh, you know, get, you know, make sure it could stop that. Then of course it would obviously be able to stop like pistol rounds if it could stop that stuff. And then you could forge yourself some, and then, you know, you could uh, sell yourself a base layer of uh, Kevlar or um, Dynama or Xylon would be dope. You could do Xylon. It's hard to get your hands on Xylon in America, and also it comes from China, and there's apparently a quarantine and virus going around, so who knows if that's possible. I'm sure it is. I'm sure you could still get it. Um, and, you know, there, there's, some, there's a guy who did, like, who worked with, like, a... Uh, AR-15, the, uh, the armor company, and, and, like, supposedly made some armor. But, uh, you know, I would want to make something, like... I, I mean, I actually like shooting and stuff, and so I, I'd like to make something that, you know, wouldn't just be, like, oh, that's cool. Like, something could actually be used, and you could... And I would, you know, actually want to be able to, like, train in it and, and get it. And then I thought I wanted to do, like, the shiny, you know, look, if I was going to do this. Um, but I actually think it'd be cooler. I like the look of painted guns. And so if you, because they, I like painting guns that then get worn in and then they lose their paint. Um, so I made the armor and I, I paint it that way. And uh, you probably want to paint it like camouflage colors. So probably like the original Boba Fett, like green and gold, kind of like the colors of uh, um, um, multicam. Um, I mean, you could paint multicam and that that get a little odd. But then. Uh, it would lose its paint over time and get that cool chipped, badass beat in look, and then, uh, and then I would put some clips on it or some manner of system for attaching fabric to it, and I'd make like a full plate carrier system where you have you know magazines and stuff on there, um, and you know I make a uh, a holster piece where you know you could put like a uh, Safari Land holster on there. Um, you could easily put a little small arm mounted flamethrower that'd be really easy and you can make it light you can make if you made it all out of titanium or to save some money you made some parts out of aluminum um you know you can make a, a really cheap or really lightweight excuse me uh little arm mount of flame door it wouldn't have a whole lot of fuel but you know you could do that um you could do some cool stuff and then a jetpack obviously uh be 
fairly easy to make, especially since the, the, the flames are above your center of mass or right about there. Um, they probably have to come around your body a little bit more to be more on the side of your body in order to be more in the center of mass. But doing that compared to making a, uh, a sled that's going to fire from the bottom and have to thrust vector and gimbal, um, you know, making just a, a jet pack would be really a lot easier. The short of what I'm trying to say is I think it'd be way easier to make a, a set of Mandalorian armor than to make an Iron Man suit. So if I build a working Iron Man suit, I may take like four months or whatever it takes. I mean, I, in my mind, I could do it in a month, but it would probably take four. Um, based on how long it's taken me to complete the Mark One. But if I do the Mark One, and then I'm like, I, there's a chance, there's a chance I may just have to slap together myself some, some functioning Mandalorian armor. Be really fucking cool. Be really cool. Let me know what you guys think. The feasibility of this. Um, only a few people have shot like uh, chunks of titanium and seen how bullet resistant it is. I'm sure the U.S. military is the Warthog. Um, the uh, the the there's armor around the cockpit um, and it's made out of titanium, so I'm sure they have some data on uh, impacts. There may be some. I wonder if there's some scientific studies out there. There's people like Demolition Ranch who just you know, and some other people on YouTube have just like you know, hey, let's shoot this fucking giant chunk of titanium and see what happens. Um, but uh. I don't know if there was, like, good data on it. I'm thinking a quarter inch would probably be enough to stop a 5.56, though. Um, especially if you had, like, type 5 titanium, if you have good quality titanium. And it can be forged, and you may have to get something a little thicker because you probably want to uh, polish away or grind away some of the outer stuff after you made it in order to get rid of some of the oxides that form because um, titanium oxides pretty heavily. I don't know. Thoughts? Thoughts? Let me know your thoughts down below. Yeah. Bye, guys.